Okay, I've just put on some liquid white over the whole canvas, a very thin even coat of liquid white and now I'm uh, going to tap into some phthalo blue some phthalo blue, yeah, just pull a little bit out and tap and tap both sides of the bristles and you give it a good tap so then you don't get any streaks on your brush you know, you get little blobs and then when you start doing your painting you get little streaks this prevents that so you tap your bristles got a little bit of black and phthalo blue midnight black phthalo blue alright using crisscross strokes we start in the top corner and move across all the way towards the horizon so we start at the top and work down and using crisscross strokes it blends nicely with the liquid white that we put on and it gets very smooth really nice and I've left a uh, couple of open areas uh, the reason I do that is it it gives it a little bit more interest you don't want just one block of colour you leave some uh, areas that are lighter and they'll give an indication of light or clouds or who knows right now I've added a little bit more colour to my brush a little bit of phthalo blue and midnight black and I'm putting dancing a little bit more in round the tops and the corners and then I'll slowly work down and as I work down it automatically picks up more liquid white on the brush and then it gets lighter towards the horizon which is what we want right I've gone over to a clean brush and using crisscross strokes again fairly lightly just smoothing it all out now I don't want to uh, do it too much because I don't want to get rid of some of the action that's in the sky I just want it to look a bit smoother a bit nicer now just get rid of the brush strokes just go all the way across very lightly if you see any little hairs in just use the corner of the brush and whip them out there we go right now using the landscape knife I'm going to start on our mountain this lesson is really all about painting a mountain and it's something I really enjoy doing and I thought I'd create a video where it's a, a little bit more broken down and by the end of this video if you've struggled with mountains in this style then uh, you should be an expert <laughs> hopefully anyway well better than me anyway right so I've uh, making a mountain mix and I've gone, got some Prussian blue some midnight black some lizard and crimson and a little bit of Van Dyke brown I tend to uh, not put that much of Van Dyke Brown, it's mostly uh, Prussian Blue, Midnight Black, uh, a fair bit of Crimson and then uh, just a little bit of uh, the Van Dyke Brown. Right, so you, you pick it up, turn it over, pull it out, pull it out flat and then you want your paint to be very flat so when you cut across you get a nice roll of paint. So just pull it out flat, cut across, see that nice roll of paint on the end of your knife that makes the knife easy to work with them um, here we go now I'm thinking mountain shape thinking how I want my mountain to look and when you're doing this bit all you're concentrating on is the outside edge you just want a nice clean outside edge for your mountain so I'm pressing on quite hard but then I scrape off excess paint but always thinking angles thinking the shape of the top of your mountain just think about the top at this stage there we go and I'm just pressing pressing quite hard just creating the shape wiggling and then removing that excess paint that's very important you don't want too much paint on there because then when you're doing your next stage it makes it harder here we go I'm going to go on this side, put on a little lump there, make it a bit more interesting. You can even do uh, paintings from pictures if you want, if you want to uh, duplicate <laughs> a mountain you like, maybe maybe one from Wales or maybe, maybe American, maybe Alaska. 
I'm just uh, I'm just sort of making one up really. I like to look at pictures of mountains and then I just create my own mountain. It's more more fun for me to create my own little worlds and stuff. Right, I'm using the two inch brush and I'm just pulling down the paint and as it pulls down you'll notice it mixes with the liquid white that we put on previously and that makes it lighter as it goes down so and also something I do use a paper towel wipe your bristles after a couple of strokes and gets off the gets rid of the excess paint makes your life a bit easier as well it helps you get that lighter bit at the bottom by doing that and here we go I'm just pulling down some more creating your shape this is the time when you can create your mountain you can work out which side you want your highlights to be and which side you want your shadows now you don't have to use the big brush like I do you can use a smaller brush there's the one inch brush works just as well just takes a bit longer but when we're painting it's not all about <laughs> rushing through a painting it's not something I do normally I don't rush through it I like to take my time I know on some of my uh, videos I'm trying to fly through doing a painting rushing it a bit but <laughs> you don't it's not what you really want to be doing unless you want to show off maybe a, do a demo or something impress some people by doing a painting really fast but not something I'd recommend it t takes the enjoyment out a little bit there we go now I'm just using crisscross strokes at the bottom just to blend it out a little bit more make it look a bit smoother get that sort of a misty area it's just something I quite I, I, I like doing that, that, that final blend and then stand back and you can see the mist and it's unbelievable that you've been able to do that here we go, I'm just sort of working my way around it, working out which side and I've I thought I want this area to be a bit more prominent so I'll put a little bit more paint on and then I'll start pulling it out in the angles of the mountain and then already you can see this bit of the mountain is in front of the rest and you can play around with that make your decisions on what area of the mountain you want in front and and you can create a really deep looking mountain then there we go so that's it's looking pretty good <laughs> not bad but now it's uh, time for highlights and uh, you I've already decided that my lights gonna come from the right side and I'm going for some titanium white I'm using uh, Bob Ross paints and equipment by the way, <laughs> uh, the reason is the paints are very dry. Uh, I find it a lot easier to work with, but you know, you you use whatever you've got. Um, but it makes your life a lot easier having a drier oil paint. You need it very dry. So then, when you uh, pull the paint down, the paint breaks. I've not tried this technique with other paints. Uh, I've only used the Bob Ross paints doing this technique. Uh, I use other paints when I'm painting more traditionally, but for this, you know, it works well. <laughs> it makes it easy, so might as well just use them. Right, and now here we go. When you're doing your highlights, to make your paint break like this, you're just holding the knife between your thumb and your fingers. You know, like like that, very easy, and you have your knife flat to the canvas, and you're just pulling it down. You're just sort of dragging, you're dragging it, and the paint just pulls off onto the canvas, and you, you very light pressure, and just go in the angles. Think of angles, and just flow down where you want your paint to be, because the uh, the way you move the knife angle you go that's the way it's going to look like the mountain falls so if you're going across then it'll look like the mountain goes across if you go down then it looks like it's going down pretty easy <laughs> very easy now I'm just loading my knife again you can't see it 
<laughs> but I really am. There we go. And just coming down there. Very light pressure. Sometimes when I'm doing this, um, quite a lot when I was first learning, I was dropping the knife a lot. And because I was trying to get that pressure to be just so light, so light that I'm almost dropping the knife. And that that is it. That is the pressure. The pressure is no pressure. <laughs> there we go. I'm just sort of creating this shape. I'm I'm working out which bits stick out more. I've already thought that I'd have that area in the front, so but I originally I wasn't gonna connect these two together, but it looked like they should do, so I just went with it. You start it's another thing, when you're doing this you start seeing things, you start feeling what areas should be where and I've just made a, a shadow colour. That's uh phalo blue and white mixed together. I've left it marbly but I I never tend to over mix my colours really. <laughs> Don't know if that's laziness or well, it just looks a bit better, I suppose, when it's not overmixed. There we go. I'm like, nah, this knife's a bit big for this. Most of the area is a little bit small. So I'm moving over to the detail knife. I'm a big fan of the detail knife. I think I've said in a couple of my videos, you know, it's fantastic. You can do whole mounds just using that knife, and uh, you'll certainly learn how to make the paint break by using that knife a lot <laughs> uh, because you know you, you have a smaller roll of paint and a smaller area to work so if you're doing a big mountain like this I mean it'll take you a lot longer imagine doing all the highlights using this knife but oh, it feels fantastic using it and it works brilliantly getting in all those hard areas to reach and you see this area at the back it's just coming straight down and that, and that's the way I'm taking the knife just go straight down there we go let's have a look at me loading the knife again the paint's flat oh bad shot oops <laughs> you didn't see anything right well what I did is I pulled the paint out very flat and then I cut across very easy I'm just using that top bit of the knife uh, I'm not sure what you call that <laughs> but some areas you need to use that little bit if you just want a little area just pulling down there we go just pull down very lightly just there we go right and now there's that big area just come down blip, blip, blip. you can sort of uh, push into the white a little bit and then as, as it comes down it sort of takes some of the white and Sometimes that can make it look a bit more like the mountain goes around rather than a harsh edge. It sort of goes around the corner, so to speak. I don't really know how to explain that. <laughs> right, I've worked out this ridge looks like it goes in front. And if you use the knife slightly upside down, I can get that shape a little bit better. Uh, I tend to use that style um, when I'm doing the brown mountains, doing the upside down way if you watch my other video on um where I do a, a a mountain without snow on and a, a little waterfall it, it, i show that there's, um there's a couple other videos on on my channel on painting i've started putting other stuff on but there's there's a few there here we go i'm just uh, back to the landscape knife just pulling down pushing up a little bit and then pull down push up a little bit and pull down and just looking at your shape take keep taking a step back I can't say that enough take a step back and have a look at your paintings it's really hard to see what you've done when you stood right up to it there we go I'm just cleaning my knife I dropped a bit of white paint there as well <laughs> but I thought oh, I'll clean that up afterwards I don't want to lose my rhythm oh, I'm looking at shapes I'm like oh if you get a bit of paint afterwards you can clean up edges but very lightly light pressure still because you're doing paint on top of paint now there we go very light pressure no pressure just the paint just the paint pulling off there we go just very light very light whisper light 
and I'm grabbing a clean dry two inch brush oh I've seen something else I've put the brush back I'm getting more paint uh, we're tidying up this bridge here I could keep going with a mountain I could keep going I could start adding more dark in areas more more white in areas I could do another layer of mountains and if you're learning how to do mountains I'd suggest doing that do a few layers do like a mountain like this and then do one in front and one in front of that and use those misty areas to separate the layers and you know you can fill a whole canvas up with mountains and by the end of that <laughs> you'll be doing mountains unbelievable ones you never thought you'd be able to do but you can do it everybody can paint especially in this technique <laughs> nice and easy even I can do this technique and before learning this I phew, I couldn't paint at all but when I'm when I'm doing this technique I almost feel like an expert <laughs> oh no thumbs up oh dear <laughs> I can't help myself I'm feeling good giving you the thumbs up I've done a good job um, no I've seen something it's not over yeah I didn't really like that bit it just didn't, didn't look right didn't feel like it goes together very well it's a little bit better uh, but this I hope this lesson gives you a good idea on how to build your mountains up and how to uh, get the technique right and then it's just up to you to play play with the technique and practice and and then after a few goes and you'll be able to do it and there, there's the finished painting I've added a few foreground trees I've put some grass in uh, bushes and there's a few trees on the grass that are going just behind as well and to create depth and yeah it's it's pretty good I'm quite happy with it <laughs> it's good good go if, if there's anything uh, you want to see uh, any lessons maybe you want to see how to do other other paintings or other things and and uh, I'll, I'll give it a go I'm gonna put some more on I'm gonna post some watercolor how to watercolor lessons as well and every now and then I'll be whacking on cartoons cause I quite enjoy doing cartoons as well so uh, if you're interested in seeing more videos click on the subscribe button or give us a like and well all I can say now is a uh, happy painting <laughs> cheers